Deb here, your spiritual cheerleader and mentor. Today we have our special guest, Charlotte Van Horn. And as I mentioned in our last video, we were going to continue this conversation. And the conversation is going to be about the article that I wrote and um, about Chai. And the, the title of the article is Chai, I Truly Turn My Mess Over to God. And in this article, you shared a little bit of your testimony. Mm -hmm. And we are going to talk a little bit more about it. Uh, or you are going to share more about that article and also all the things that you have accomplished since that time. And, and, I, and my question is, what exactly do you mean? Or did you mean when you said, I truly turned my mess over to God? First of all, let, let me just address the fact that I'm really not pink. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I, I'm tickle pink to be on Greater is Jesus and Me YouTube channel with my girl, but I mean God is just giving me pink today. Yeah. Um so you just want to address that. I think that when I think of when I when I left from Mississippi, my mother passed in 1987. And, you know, I mean, I was young and I had I had my issues. Um, I was a drug user. You know, I used to make bad decisions. I had a, a sister tell me one time, she, she said, you're hooked on crisis. And I wanted to punch her in the face. I wanted to punch her in the face, cut her to the white meat. And um, but when I got quiet with myself, you know, and that is that is it was true you know because when you're constantly doing things that are going to lead to certain consequences mm -hmm. that you've already mm -hmm. experienced mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. it is kind of hooked on crisis you know because you're going to put, keep putting yourself in the same situation so i was really struggling and um and a friend my best friend in the, in the whole entire world, you know, still my best friend today, um, she was stationed in Mississippi. And she said, um, I had not expressed to her, like I had kind of like, was kind of really over the top at that point with my drug usage. But I was like one of those people who kept a nice house. You know, I kept a car, you know, me and my baby was fly. You know, I kept a job. So, the, I say that to say that just because somebody looks like everything is okay, sometimes you got to listen close to the missing parts of their story. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes when they're talking, because I, you know, to the, to the human eye, my family didn't even know where I was. My best friend at that point didn't even know where, how far I had gone down. And um, she used to say, Shy, you know, why don't you come? And by the way, my nickname is Shy. Deb, you call me Shy all the time. Yeah, I do. And people don't know that Shy and Charlotte are the same people. <laughs> but I am. And she said, come to Mississippi. Um, I'm telling you, you would like it. I said, girl, they would hang me in Mississippi. I'm not going to Mississippi. And I'm, I'm from New Jersey. And, um, you know, I got a mouth for me and everything like that. And I just never thought I could survive or would enjoy being in the South. And, um. One day I, I woke up and I just decided that I didn't have anything to lose, that the life I could see that my where my life was leading wasn't in a, going to end up in a place that I wanted to be. And um, so I booked a, a, an Amtrak ticket to Biloxi, Mississippi. It was in um, September of 1993. Mm. And um, me and my six year old and a footlocker from Kmart, we got on that train. I had $11 in the bank and we stepped out on faith and we left and we moved from New Jersey to Mississippi. And um, wait, 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 I wait, wait, wait. Whole, so you had $11 in the bank? $11 in the bank. I had $11 in the bank. Well, wait a minute. No, no, no. I'm sorry. That was another time. This particular time I had $40, $40 to my name. So thank you for clarifying that for me because that was another time I had $11 in the bank. But and God brought me through that too. But I had like $40. And when I got to the Union Station stop, 
by then I had realized that eating on the train was expensive. And me and my baby was going to be on the train for about 24 hours. And so I, um, so when we stopped at Union Station, girl, I loaded up on McDonald's. And you know, McDonald's, you could have McDonald's food for a year and it still looks the same. So, you know, I figured it would be okay. You know, if it wasn't cold or whatever, it would be something for us to eat. So I loaded up on McDonald's, get on the train, and this handsome um, gentleman in a tuxedo came to me. I swear he was an angel, Deb. And he says, pardon, madame. He says, would you and your travel companion like to be my guest for dinner tonight? Now, you got to remember, back then I was 29 and fine, okay? And so I just figured he was trying to hit on me, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, yes. And I mean, I did know the Lord back then. We, you know, I, I hadn't come as far as I needed to at all, you know, with him. But I was like, yeah, won't he do it? And we ended up having this amazing dinner. Um, I mean, and the guy wasn't trying to hit on me or anything. So some other amazing things happened on the train, but I'll, I'll, I'll abbreviate this story. So we get to, and the train, the train at wrecked, the same route that I was taking wrecked. It was the worst wreck in Amtrak history. 47 people died. That this, the same route, it was like two weeks before I left, the same route went over a bridge and a bayou had hit uh, a, a barge or something that hit the bridge and weakened it. And the train fell off the bridge. The, the bridge gave way. And I called Amtrak and I said, oh, I, I need my money back. And they said, well, we don't do it. Your ticket's non-refundable. And I think the only reason I ended up, you know, just, you know, getting the courage to get on that train was that I just couldn't afford to lose $247. So, Got on the train, made it to uh, Mississippi. And when I got to Biloxi and we, my, my girlfriend came and picked me up from the train station and her and her girlfriend. And when I got to Biloxi and I got on this road called um, Beach Road, mm. there was a peace that came over me that I had never, ever experienced. And God said to me, this is where I want you to be mm. and everything is going to be okay. And I think that that was my first real, real experience with God and that I knew that if I followed him, that I would be okay. Mm. Wow. Yes. Wow. And that, and that, and that people, you want a lot of you want a lot of things in your life. And I and I understand that. But honestly, um, if you don't have peace, nothing. There's nothing like a peace. Mm -hmm. And I changed my life that day. That day was it. Yeah, because uh, you know what? I understand that. Because in, in the article, you had said, I look at all the blessings in my life and I can trace them back to the day I decided to truly turn my mess over to God and trust him to make me whole. And many times people, um, when you say God spoke to me, they look at you like, God talked to you? You heard, but you, you are saying you heard when God told you this. And that's when yes. your life turned around. Mm -hmm. that was it mm. that, that was it that was that was that was the moment mm -hmm. you know he was speaking to me all the time um mm -hmm. because i had given my life to christ mm, probably about four years before then mm -hmm. and um he was speaking to me all the time but you know sometimes you just so you're just so tied into what you're doing that you don't even really understand that that God is speaking to you. And sometime if he's speaking to you, you would say, you know, to yourself, it would be nice to be able to do something like that, but I'm just not in a position right now to, to do it. You know, um, mm -hmm. you doubt yourself, you doubt what you're hearing from God and you doubt that the direction that he's giving you is going to take you to a better place. Mm -hmm. It's fear. Mm -hmm. But you know, and, and, and your story is amazing because 
of there's so many people that are going through the same thing, the doubt, people struggling with different addictions and thinking that they can't get out of it or they can't overcome it, people feeling hopeless. And your story is a story of hope that no matter what you're going through in life, when you either listen to God or you go to God and, and, and turn it over to God, God is going to perform miracles in your life. Yes. Things that you can't even imagine. And, and, and that's what your story is about. Yeah. That's it what it was about. So, it and, and it can happen at any time, any age. It doesn't, because there's yes. no age to this. Right. And everybody's Christian journey is different. No two Christian journeys are the same. And even when we turn our lives over to, to, to Christ, it doesn't happen like this overnight. As you said, you did it four years, ago, uh, four years before, but mm -hmm. four years later is when it all connected and came together for you. And, yeah. and it's really surrendering all to God. And that's what a lot of us, a lot of Christians don't do. They don't, yes, they accept Jesus, but they don't surrender all to God. And that's what's really going to make the difference. It is. It is. But, you know, I mean, because we are just humans, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's understandable. Yes. You know, Absolutely. and everybody just got to get where they're going in Christ and whatever route they, they take. You know, with some of the things, you know, I look at, I look at my, my daughter and, and I think to myself, I wish I had her mind at 30, you know, she's so responsible and, you know, she just does things in so a complete different way than my crazy tail did, you know, um, at 30. And although I feel like times for me doing then would have been better had I made better decisions and everything like that, but it is what it is. Exactly. And your life is what your life is. And what I found to be is that those times was pieces to the puzzle. Yes. Those times when my mind and my, and my maturity was at a certain place, had God tried to bless me with some of the blessings that he's bestowed upon me um, since then, I would have definitely killed myself with it. I would have definitely just wasn't you, ready. You probably be able to handle it. That's the thing. So that's why we can't get certain things at certain times because yes. sometimes we, yes. we are not able to handle certain blessings <laughs> yeah exactly and that's the truth you know i mean that is the absolute truth if if i mean because, and, and not only that had god blessed me with some of the things that he's blessed me with since i had that revelation um i would have been living a life of regret at this point because i would i would be able to see at this point the opportunities and the blessings that I had blown. Mm. And, and I don't and, live in regret. So I and, thank God for, for just this journey, period. And that's good because a lot of people do live in regrets and they mm -hmm. can't enjoy what God is blessing them with because they just constantly keep going back. If I had done this, if I didn't do that, you can't change the past. You just have to move forward. You learn from the past and you just keep moving forward. Yes. Just and, use that rear view mirror to, to know where you came from. Yes, exactly. You know? Don't forget, yeah. don't, you don't want to forget yeah. completely because uh, that's not the point. You want that's to it. remember where you were and where you are today and knowing that God is the one that has brought you through that. So, yes. and, and now that we're talking about blessings, so let's mm -hmm. talk about where you were because when I met you, you were a legal secretary. Mm -hmm. Since then, <laughs> I want you, I know what you're doing, but uh -huh. tell the audience all your accomplishments to now. Well, um, 
One thing that I did was um, I left corporate America January 5th at 4 p.m. Um, 2017, I said goodbye to corporate America. And that was a happy day. That was a happy day. And that was a big part of my journey. And even being, you know, even as far as that, making that step into, I'm going to, cause I was doing locks, I was locks forever at that point, which, you know, I'm a sister locks consultant and I'm a brand ambassador since then. Um, I've established the status of um, brand ambassador with the company and um, we, we created a product line um, um, and we went full time in um, January 2017. And, um, you know, since then, I've, um, I've become a podcast host. I have um, Sisters Talking Natural Hair and Business, where I try to um, encourage um, African Americans in the natural hair business to do better business mm -hmm. and to look at our hair as business, you know, because we are CEOs. And I think that because natural hair is just such a part of us growing up and, you know, familial set settings and things like that, that we have a hard time transitioning to the CEO part. And in order to be competitive, you know, going forward, we're going to have to do better. So I do um, Sisters Talking Natural Hair and Business. Um, uh, we have a, um, I started a new business called Black Expats in Panama, and that kind of started when um, my, my husband is Panamanian, you know, like you said, and I went, went to Panama and was going to transition Sister Locks. And took over and Panama. Huh? And took over Panama. <laughs> <laughs> um, we went there and um i mean i started this facebook group and this is just god this is just god leading me from one thing to another and i started this facebook group look full disclosure i was just trying to figure out how was i going to connect with people who understood the price of sister locks mm -hmm. in the united mm -hmm. states that could really appreciate my panama priced version you know and i started a group and the group grew little by little and um but when COVID hit people just started looking for expat opportunities and my page just grew mm. and um mm. ended up addressing the needs of the individuals on the page that's when we started our cultural relocation tours where i am like totally absolutely in love with the panama culture and um, the contributions that Black Panamanians have made to the country as a whole. So we created a tour that, um, you know, we, we connected with developers in Panama and we take them to, we don't go all far out. We stay within an hour and a half to the city. So we started that and, you know, God has just helped, you know, move me in a direction to continuing to develop that. And, oh my goodness, like, it's like so many opportunities have opened up you know, just by doing this, that, I mean, our group, our, our group mm -hmm. is like 3,200 or more, you know, mm -hmm. at this point where it was 200 mm -hmm. last year, um, mm -hmm. at this point, we started our tours in May and we've been, we have probably taken over 50 people to Panama wow. at this point. Wow. And, um, it's just, you know, and, and showing them the culture and what it's like to live there and everything. So that is one of the, the biggest things that I've done. And God has allowed uh, me to now be in a position to transition from even doing hair in the United States and, and doing black expats in Panama, you know, full time. Uh, we became an LLC and trademarked and um, it's, you know, just to be a place in, you know, God will got your God will prepare the place for you. Oh yes, you know, oh, yes. for oh, me, yes. little on me to be approached by developers, hospital owners. You know, people see that there is a movement here, and they want to be a part of it. And it's it's just amazing that we're able to share with people and help people think outside the box of just having one ID in their wallet. So that was great. Then I was approached. Um, by a radio station um, out of Costa Rica, um, a new radio station called BlacksitRadio.com, um, Sundays at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's so, God is just so, he's so perfect. 
um, Deb, because one of the things that I'm going to be doing and on my broadcast, because I've done so many we have YouTube channels and a website and everything like that. We've done so many interviews with Panamanians, with, um, you know, uh, Black expats that live in Panama. It's like, what do I do next as far as the radio? And then God gave me, says, it's time to tell your story. And I'm going to give it up, you know, and because and people need to know that God can take your mess and make it a message, you yeah, know? Exactly. And I like that. God can definitely take your mess and make it a message. It shows again that where you were, you are far gone beyond, and that's been God's favor.